When did you realize that you were championship material? When did that realization come for you? Um, definitely after fighting Jermaine, you know, um, there's been times where I've doubted myself because they say that, you know, I strike like this, you know, and so they make fun of me and they say, you know, her striking is garbage. She doesn't have any striking. Well, you know, when I fought Valentina, I outstruck Valentina. So that could have been a, an, a chance, but then I had to face an even better striker in Jermaine. She's the best striker in the division. And, and just knowing that you're going to be fighting this beast, you know what I mean? Is like, am I going to, how am I going to be able to do this? And then if you go back and you look at the stats, I'm backing her up. I'm out striking Jermaine. I outstruck Jermaine. So, you know, getting in there with the best in the world, the Valentina's, the Amanda's, the, the Jermaine's, um, and, and always constantly fighting champion, 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 um, definitely gave me the, the confidence to know that I can hang in there with anybody and, and that I am a champion. What did it feel like? Um, I mean, because you, you kept telling people in the build up to the Amanda fight that like, I'm, I'm a bad style matchup for her. like, I'm, I'm not afraid of her, like, and just nobody believing that like, everyone's like, okay, that's cool. You believe that. But it, like, it didn't seem like anyone believed that. And like, after talking to Rick, like, it, it wasn't like, like, sometimes big underdogs will say that and you kind of get the feeling that like, they don't truly believe that like, they're saying it's almost build their confidence, like after talking to Rick more about it, and then you, of course, like you really believe I, I like I bet that this wasn't even an upset that like you are a terrible fight for Amanda right like like when did you when did you figure that out that like 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 yeah she's she's like the goat and she's the everybody we're talking about but like she's not a tough fight for me I, I absolutely would like to first uh give Amanda the credit in the world she is tough and she is a tough matchup for me and she's a tough matchup for anybody I don't want to um discredit her in any way but what I what I was meaning to say is that styles makes fights and I am a terrible stylistic matchup for her because of the way that I have seen her fight in the past and because of the people that I have fought and the people that she has fought with that being said it's not a surprise to me at all that nobody was listening to me because I feel like I am constantly falling on deaf ears no matter what. Uh, when I won the Ultimate Fighter, I had fought four girls in a row. Rhonda only had to fight one and she even got to come into the promotion and just get a belt given to her. And I had to fight four chicks, you know? And I'm like, I can fight her. Like I, I can fight this girl. I'm a bad style matchup for her too. Um, and I kept calling for that fight, but everyone was like, get out of here, scrub. You're not on this league. You know what I mean? And so no one ever gave me that shot. And then of course, you know, injuries and stuff like that happened. And then she left the division, but I have always been confident enough to know that I can fight whoever holds the belt. And that is something that you either know about yourself or you don't know about yourself. I've seen some of these girls get in here and be like, well, I'm still young in my career and I'm not ready to fight for the championship yet, but maybe later on in the future. And that's fine, you know, that you can be honest with yourself and you can admit that. But I know that, you know, being tough is something that is being taught and I'm as tough as they come. I'm as tough as nails. So I know for a fact that I can get in there with any champion who holds the belt. I don't care who they are or what they've done. And I've learned that from fighting those Valentine and from fighting those germanes of like I don't care that they're you know an eight-time world champion boxer or an eight 17 time Muay Thai world champion I don't care what are you willing to say about the way in which you choked Amanda Nunes out I am willing to say that it was on and she had no choice but to tap and uh you know, let's give the girl some credit. She's a black belt in jujitsu. I think she knows how to defend a rear naked choke. She knows how to, to, to get out of submissions. I think that she felt a pressure that she hadn't ever felt before. And uh, there was nowhere for her to go, but, but tap. Mm -hmm. Why? I, I mean, I can kind of understand it, but why do you think that there's not like this, um, this desire on your part to be like, like, this is this is what she was feeling this is what the choke is and all you people who think that she quit like this is i can tell you why that's not the case like why do you think that that's not a desire on your part i don't like to poke the bear um and i don't like to give anybody anything because 
then I'll be like paranoid and be like, they know, you know what I mean? It's like, I would rather it be like my little secret than to spill all the beans. Like a good musician never reveals his secrets, even though it sounds like Rick already did. Yeah. <laughs> but I just don't want anybody to, to catch on to anything. You know what I mean? I'd rather keep it under wraps, let them think whatever they want. Do you think Amanda knows though? No, because she's always been making excuses the whole time you know but I will say that I saw an interview that she did while we were filming the ultimate fighter and she said all you commentators you would think that you guys would be better and understand and know what was actually happening in the fight um you guys just kept saying that I was tired she says I was rocked she hit me I didn't know where I was and I couldn't recover and I was hurt and you guys all think that it was because I ran out of gas or that I was tired. It, I wasn't tired. I was, you know, but, and this is, you know, I'm saying it in a nutshell. She's in la la land. You know, I could freaking wrap my finger around the back of her ear and pull it hard. She's going to tap. You know what I mean? She's in a different, she's shadow realm, you know? So it's uh, a thing where that happened because of what was a result of what happened on the feet. Now, with that being said, she doesn't want to give me any credit for anything. You know, I had a tight Kimura. She's acting like I didn't have a tight Kimura. I, I, I tapped her out with a rear naked choke. She's saying she got choked because, you know, her knees are messed up. You know, it's like she is, and, and God bless her. And, and I understand exactly what she's doing. You got to tell yourself something. How are you going to sleep at night? You know, you, you have to tell yourself something so that you can be motivated to get up and wake up and go train every single day to get this fight under your belt. Like somebody's telling her something. No, it wasn't real or no, it was this or no, it was that. She's, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You know, she needs to cling on to something to give her that motivation to get back in there again. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel um, do you feel like it was an upset? When you hear people say it was an upset, or Juliana Pena upset Amanda Nunes. Do you feel like it was? I, I think it's like cute in the sense that like the biggest upset in history, but like, no, I was 110% fully committed to walking out of there with my hand raised and with that belt that night, I was not going to be denied and there was going to be no other outcome. I had seen it um, in my dreams. I had seen it um, in when I closed my eyes. I, I, I had seen it so many different times leading up to the fight and, and, and in my life that there was no, not going to be any other outcome. I, I was actually, and I don't really ever say this, but I was excited to get in there. I was excited to, to go and fight because I knew that I just needed them to say go so that I could make it happen. But let's also not take any credit away from Amanda. She's the best of the best. I walked out of there with a swollen eye shut. You know what I mean? She, I took her hardest shots. Like she literally gave me the kitchen sink and some, and she was still coming. So it's not like it was just some stroll in the park and ooh, I got my hand raised and I got the belt. I had to fight for every square inch of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm absolutely ready to do that again. Can you talk about how, like, do you remember anything specific about what, anything that you felt or like anything that happened in the locker room beforehand that maybe compares to how you usually feel or like, was it, cause you just said like, you were really excited. Like that, is that, is that a very unique feeling? Like what, what was the feeling and kind of the tone in there? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that it's a unique feeling because if you ever like listen to Nick Diaz, they'd be like, are you excited for your fight? Like, I don't get excited to get in fist fights, bro. Like it's serious. And it so is serious. And when I say excited, I mean that with a big grain of salt, because it's not an exciting, like I'm so joyful. It's excited in the sense that I know I'm going to win. And so I just need somebody to say go so that I can go and get the win. Um, and, and then I can be, you know, excited, more excited or what will, really means excited but I was just excited like ready for it to happen because I I knew I was going to win mm -hmm. um the feeling in the back was cool peace just at peace you know I have made peace with the fact that I'm going to live I have made peace with the fact that I'm going to die and uh when you make peace with that reality uh there's nothing left to fear so I was just at 110 percent cool, calm and collected. Why were you the one that could actually get it done when the time mattered against Amanda? Well, I didn't ever think about, you know, the failures of 
why everyone else sucked and wasn't able to get the job done or, or why they, you know, what mistakes they made. I just focused on what I needed to do. And that was a hard reality to know that you see that gigantic right hand that she's knocking everybody out with, you know, that's fluff. You just go right into it, you know, and, and, that's not something that normal people are like, okay, I can't wait. You know, it's like, that's scary. That's a scary reality that you're going to know that you have to go take that head on, eat it like it's a Scooby snack and keep coming forward. And, and not a lot of people are built that way. I, I am built that way. I'm not the type of fighter to retreat. I am the wall that gets bashed up against when it's time to meet that fire with fire and I will not retreat. And, and I think that that was the, the recipe for success. You do not retreat, you stand your ground. And if she wants to come take it, let her come and try. But, but we're absolutely going to come and meet this monster head on and, and we got to cut its head off. And, and that's, that was the plan from day one. And, and that's my focus. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.